everything to do with judging and bias. So buckle up, keep yourself caffeinated, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. So here we go. Hey guys, Nolan here. So we did it again. We took another short video and we were able to get double the amount and we got 2,000 views. 2,000 views in 24 hours. So we're doing really well here. I want to also thank everybody who has subscribed. Thank you new viewers. Welcome to the horse world. So today's video comes from another subscriber asking, is there such thing as judging bias and what is that doing to the horse world and how it affects us showing? So let's just first start with the first question, which is, is there such thing as judging bias? Easy answer, yes there is. It's mainly found in the lower levels. As you go higher and when you get more judges uh, around the ring who are judging you. There's less bias at that point. So let's just say you have five different judges. This is going like a really like Grand Prix international, but just I'm using this as an example. So let's just say you have five different judges and if one of them has a bias, want to slaughter the rider, let's say their mark is 50 and the other judges is 73. The one who just slaughtered is going to look really out of it and question why is your mark so very different from all the other ones? But that is higher up in the uh, realm of things, especially when like most of us are not getting five different judges, international quality, blah, blah, blah. Chances are that's not happening. When you get judging bias, as I say, it's usually when you have the one judge and usually you get one judge when you do the lower levels of dressage. So let's go with what is judging bias? So judges bias is when a certain judge will favor certain types of breeds or certain type of riders. They'll favor them in a way that, you know, they get higher marks because their horses say flashier. What I'm talking about here is judges bias in regards to breeds. So let's take a quick step into what should judges be looking at? No, they should not be looking at who's the most flashy horse going. That's not what they should be looking at. The flashiest horse should not be winning. That doesn't mean the flashiest horse can't win. In a previous video, which I'll link to up there and down below for you mobile users, I spoke about what dressage is supposed to be about. And dressage is supposed to be about taking what the horse naturally offers and making it better. So with that mindset, a horse that is flashy and is kind of putting in like 20% into their ride and the horse and rider are just kind of going around the ring on the horse's talent, that horse should be coming out with 50s, whereas the horse, let's just say he's a quarter horse and he's giving it all, he's doing the best that he can do, he should be getting 70s. Because you have to remember, the person judging should be looking at what the horse is capable of and how has the rider helped him to achieve the best that he can do. What judges should be asking themselves is, is that the best that horse can do today? Funny enough, one of my mother's coaches is a judge. I mean, my coach that I have now is a judge. They go to these judges' clinics, horses come in, and they're expected to obviously judge them. So this one horse came in and it was just a nice little thoroughbred, did a really nice extension. What they were asked was, what would you grade this? How many give them a five because the movement was completed. And one other person gave the horse an eight. The person giving the clinic said, yes, it should have been given an eight because for that horse, that's the best extension that horse could have given. So when I'm training, I have the same mentality in my head. My horses, they have a flash to them. They are Dutch, so they have a bit of, um, a special flair to them. When I'm training, I like to think if I were to take away that flair, am I still doing it correctly? So in other words is if he weren't so flashy and he came around like a quarter horse, would he still get really good marks because he's doing the best that he can do? Not that I'm sitting back and riding off the horse's talent. And in another video, I will get into why I think that and how that can help you as riders. But back on topic. So the next part of the question is, how is this bad for the industry? Well, there are many things wrong with this mentality if we're just going to go off of what a judge likes. And this happened to me once when I showed B and I went under this one judge. I'd never ridden under her before. I did a meh test and I knew deep down it was a meh test because B could flick the toes, as we call it. I was given a 78 and everyone would probably go, that's great, that's a really good mark. And it is a good mark. Unfortunately, the bad part is it wasn't worth it. I know what I just said confused some people. Why do we show? Now, there are people who show because they love competing. There are people who show because they want to get points to compete more or go to championships or to go to all that fun stuff. Why do I show? I show to get an opinion from somebody who is not on my team. If I have a coach 
who's saying, you're doing great, Nolan. Keep going. Yep, that's how you do it. Blah, blah, blah. And then I go into the show ring and I get slaughtered. And I wrote exactly like I did at home. There's a problem there. Now, granted, you would have to remember that judges are just people with opinions. But if I go to a show and I'm consistently getting a bad score and the marks don't reflect what I'm doing at home, then there's a problem with my schooling. And this is where it kind of starts getting bad for the industry. If people are giving out gimme marks because the horse is flashy, then nobody's learning how to correctly ride. Hey, editing Nolan here. I just wanted to quickly jump in here just to clarify something. Students are learning to become passengers. And when they become passengers, that starts to screw them as they're pushed by these same judges through the levels saying, oh, you should go up another level. Your horse looks like he can do it. Just go up another level, you'll be fine. The problem with that is the students become passengers and they never actually learn the school. Horses are being pushed through the levels, which means their training starts to become rushed. I mean, I have another video about all of that up there and I'll link down below. Just wanted to put that in there because that was bugging me. Back to the normal video. If we go with allowing bias to happen, there's a whole shipment of horses that get kicked out for the new and up and comings to come through. By that I mean is, you know, people who ride thoroughbreds, who wear, ride Andalusians, who ride quarter horses, all that get shoved out because that's not pretty enough and that's not cool enough. We want all the warm bloods and there are judges who do that. They do not like seeing those other horses. They only care about watching warm bloods go. As I say with dressage, it's a whole spectrum. Everybody should be included. So why should, you know, Tommy over here, who has the big flashy dressage horse, keep getting marked really well for not doing anything. Meanwhile, Sally over here, who comes in with her thoroughbred or her quarter horse, is getting slaughtered. Meanwhile, the horse is going way better for its ability. Almost in a way, it kind of encourages riders to not ride anymore. To have a horse go well, you have to ride. That's pretty much the basic to it. You have to ride, and you have to ride correctly, and you have to ride well. As I say, if Tommy's not riding that much, but his horse just does it and looks pretty, he's going to get the marks. But then, as I say, Sally, who is riding correctly, isn't getting the marks. Now it's kind of putting in the minds of, well, you have to pay it. You have to buy the horse for the discipline, which dressage isn't about that. And then, unfortunately, it becomes discouraging to amateurs or people who can't either afford the warm bloods or who just really don't want the warm blood. Maybe they just really enjoy thoroughbreds or they enjoy quarter horses or they enjoy all the other breeds that are out there. It becomes a little stupid and unfair. And if you're a hunter jumper, I know for a fact I was a hunter jumper once. This happens in the show ring there too. The best one is, this is what floors me about the hunters. In dressage, you're given a whole sheet about your test with all the marks and comments next to them saying why you got this mark. In the hunter ring, you don't get that. So with dressage, you kind of see what the problems are down on the piece of paper and you get to analyze it and then figure out, oh, if I do A, B, and C, maybe I'll get a better mark next time. In the hunter world, you're not so lucky. You go into that ring, you spin around those jumps, you do your little hat class, and guess what happens at the end of it? Oh, the judge doesn't like chestnuts. So all the chestnuts, none of you are getting pinned because I don't like chestnuts. You're riding a thoroughbred, I like a warm blood. Get out, we don't want you in this ring. And the worst part about the mentality of that, they don't even get a piece of paper to say why there's a bias against them. They're just kind of asked to leave. They don't know if it was because how the horse was moving or if they weren't following a certain criteria, like as I say in the hack classes. So you kind of go into the whole thing going, am I not winning or am I not pinning because I did something wrong? Or am I not pinning because the judge doesn't like the color of my horse? Now there's a big thing with judges bias. And anybody who says that doesn't happen. In the hunters, it's almost like a popularity contest. Oh, your coach is screaming at you from the edge of the ring. Oh, the judge is friends with that coach. Oh, well, we better pin her. So let's just say this is happening to you. What do you do about it? There's no real answer to say, oh, just do this and this fixes everything. No, as I said, it's toned down a lot now. But if it's happening to you and you're starting to sense that it's happening to you, the best thing for riders and amateurs to do is keep yourself educated. Know which judges are being biased. If you want to take it a step further, you can always go talk to the judge at a show. But now, I was wondering what she was coming in. 
I know what she's going to say. Remember, you can't just walk up to a judge and start asking questions. You're at a show. Find a steward, ask them to go talk to the judge, and then they will initiate the conversation and ask the judge if they're interested. You can't go and just ask the judge. If the judge is good, chances are, and I've had how many of these judges myself, as has my mother, they will be more than willing to come out and talk to you about the test. So that's pretty much what judges bias is. Does it still happen? Yes. Is it as thick as it was years ago? No. Not as much in dressage anymore, although it still happens. Although I do still see a lot of it in the hunter world. Best advice I can give, keep yourself educated. Better yourself so that you kind of force the judges to give you good marks. Charlotte said this in uh, some article many years ago. Obviously, we're talking about dressage world here, but it goes for both. Judges love to get fives. They love just to say, eh, you did the movement. So you really need to ride, ride well. And when I say ride hard, I don't mean like, ah, we're riding hard. It just means be on top of yourself to be so good that the judges can't give you a mark lower than excellent or good. Know that you're not alone. Know that we do. And when I say we, I mean everybody in the horse community knows that horse bias happens. And the best thing to do, if you can't, don't go under that judge. If you can, talk to that judge after you've feel like you've been blacklisted or however you want to call it, go talk to them. Remember, talk to a steward first if you're in dressage. Also guys who have, you know, a thoroughbred or quarter horse or Andalusian or any of them, whatever, that should not discourage you from going into the show ring and performing. Ride, ride well. Don't give the judge an excuse to give you a low score. Show them by riding well and correctly that they got to give it to you. And that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know down below. What do you think in the comments? Have you been judged unfairly? Have you been a victim of judging bias? Has it ever happened to you like it did me where I go in, my horse is flashy and we aren't really riding 100% or really that great at all. And we still came out with flying colors. Once again, thanks again for everything guys. I hope you've had a Merry Christmas. I'm hoping to get this up before. I did kind of screw up the videos. I was supposed to have a short today and this video yesterday, but if you haven't seen that video regarding my Christmas failure, Christmas photo shoot failure right there, you can check it down below. You should watch it, definitely. And remember, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I am on Twitter, I am, I'm on it all. You should definitely check me out, follow me, stay connected. That's it. If you haven't already, remember to hit that subscribe button. We have new videos up every single week, whether it's shorts or it's this information. If you have a question you'd like me to answer, let me know down below in the comments or contact me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know the drill. That's pretty much all I got for you guys. Merry Christmas, or if you don't celebrate Christmas, Happy holidays, enjoy, and I will talk to you.